So I want to do what we want to do something to next is to say those of you who are already leading a table, what kind of responsibilities, what kind of commitments are we asking from you as a table leader? Those of you who are considering becoming a table leader, you know, we want you to count the cost. You know, there's this story in scripture that says, you know, you, you, you decide to build a building and you, uh, you have $10 in your pocket so you begin to build a building and you run out of money and people walk by and they go, what a fool. I think I didn't count the cost. Today, if you're already leading a table, I really would love you to, as a, as a question to live in, as David is bringing this to you, say, am I willing to do this? I mean, if you're not, then I think maybe the next decision would be, I need to step up. So that's kind of the seriousness with which we want to have this conversation. Um, if this is not your assignment, then you're stealing an assignment from some other man at your table. Um, so uh, receive this as we are asking you to consider what it is, and we're asking you to make a decision about what it is. So David Sepchek is a long-term executive council member, uh, a man who has a lot of integrity and who brings a lot of wisdom. He's been leading a table for a long time. He's been living a man, as a man of God for a long time. So uh, if you could just welcome David. And Consider, prayerfully consider, to decide whether you're being called into 10 men leadership. The first component is the criteria. How do you know that you are being called into 10 men leadership? How do you know that this is the right ministry role for you? The second component is expectations. What expectations does the Waterboys leadership have of you? when you take on this role as table leader. And the third is a commitment. What commitments are you making when you agree with God and say, yes, count me in? Now, some of you are thinking, well, I've been a table leader for a few years now. What, what does this have to do with me? I've made my decision. Well, there's a few things. Number one, there are men here that are praying about and seeking whether to be table leaders. Number two is that we as table leaders should be looking to train our replacement. And we need to know this information. Number one, so we can determine and know what we're looking for. And number two, so that we can convey this message. 
And the third reason is that it's always good to get back to our roots, get back to the basics, get back to the fundamentals. What I'm going to go through is what we do and why we do it. Okay, so the first is criteria. How do you know you're being called into 10 men leadership, that this is the right ministry role for you? Well, I'm going to give you five questions to ask yourself. And you should pray about these questions. You should do some soul searching. You should talk to other leaders about this to seek out conversation. Why is this step so important? Why is this step so critical? This is why. Because when you step into this role as a table leader, you will feel inadequate. You will feel inadequate from a human perspective and from a spiritual perspective. You will come under attack. And you need to know, this is God's will for my life. And the only thing left to do is to be obedient. Okay? You will be equipped. As long as you're equipped and you're prayed up, all you need to do is show up. Invite the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, Our power is from God, not of ourselves. We just need to show up. So what are these questions? I've identified five questions. The first is, do you have an overwhelming burden to help men see themselves as God sees them? In other words, you want to help them understand that Christ-likeness and manhood are the same thing. Second question. Is your heart soft for the men at your table? Do you find yourself praying for them? Do you see these men from God's perspective? That you see their full potential and you have this desire within you to help them grow and mature and be strengthened in the Lord. Third question. Are you committed to living life with a biblical worldview and you have the same desire to have your men live in that same way? In other words, are you living life in a way where your thoughts, your words, your actions draw men to you. They see the love of Christ in you and through you and you're drawing men. They want to be part of this. Fourth question. Do you see the Bible as the infallible word of God? And you've submitted your life to its truths. All its truths. We don't have the opportunity or the luxury to pick and choose what we believe. Amen. We believe that this is the entire truth. Amen. The Word of God. And if you have trouble believing that, table leadership is not for you. The last question is this. Are you part of your local church? Are you known there? Do you serve there? Amen. You need to be plugged in. The Water Boys Ministry supports the local church. And when you're involved in this role or any role in the ministry, you need to ask yourself, how is this supporting my local church? As being a table leader, I see strengthening the men at my table as an opportunity for them to go back and strengthen their local church. So that's the criteria. Ask yourself these questions to help you understand. Is this the right ministry role for me? The next component is the expectations. What does the water boys leadership expect of you when you walk into this role? Now, as I go through this list, one thing I want to make very clear. We all lead busy lives. We serve in our churches. We're devoted husbands and fathers. We serve in our community. We serve our employers. I'm going to list a number of events that you should be part of. But be reminded, we are not an event-driven ministry. None of us should or could attend all these events. 
but it, it, it is part of our DNA. And each of these events serve a specific purpose <coughs> and fills a specific need. That's why we do them. It helps to make us whole. Now I'm going to give you the key to maintain balance in your life. This is the secret to success. One word, you may want to write this down. <laughs> Calendar. Calendar. It's that simple. We publish a calendar. We have all events identified. Leadership gatherings, every event under the water boys on a calendar. Take this, write it in your personal calendar. That way, when a conflict comes up, you at least have the opportunity to, to, to say and already know, oh, this is going on that way, and you can determine what is the best priority for you. So, it's that simple. One word, calendar. So what are the expectations? I've identified seven of the main ones. Number one, and this is the most important, the most important expectation is that you take your role seriously. Take it humbly and take it soberly. Okay? You should see this as one of your primary ministry callings. And if you aren't committed to supporting these activities and you don't see value in them, your men won't either. Okay? We're not going to beat you up over this and say, why weren't you there? But you should have a desire and a conviction in your heart to at least want to make an effort to be a part of these events. Second expectation is that you participate in the monthly serving projects. Okay, when you participate, you're saying this has high value. And we're following scripture when we serve in this way. Okay, why do we do this? Why do we have these serving projects? Because we want to tear down our selfishness, our pride, our selfish ambition, okay? But most importantly, we want to give to a lost and dying world a view of love and action, okay? They see the love of Christ through us, and this draws them into the kingdom. That's why we do this. Third expectation, attend the ten men leadership gatherings. Okay. Why should you attend these gatherings? Because it's a time where we connect our hearts. It's a time where we share vision. It's a time of equip equipping. It's a time of encouragement and support. Okay, And it doesn't stop here. The expectation is you take this down to your table. You are the link between leadership and the rest of the ministry. <clears throat> Take this information, equip your men, encourage your men, share vision with your men. Fourth expectation, be a part of the 200 men choir. Why? Because this is a great celebration. This is our opportunity to show what God is doing in us and through us. And for those of you that have been part of it, you know, you know, what a unique and powerful and transformational experience it is. If you don't, they won't. Number five, attend a yearly advance. Okay, this is our opportunity to build relationship and community. Okay, we all need to step away from the busyness of life. And like this is our time. We like go out in the wilderness, go out into the desert. Drown out the noise of life and focus on our relationship with the Lord. It's an important time. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we just need to be still. Six expectation. Attend the quarterly breakfast. Break bread and worship together. Instead of a 10-man table, you're attending a 100-man table or a 200-man table. Okay? And it's our opportunity to meet as a means of connecting all the water boys together. And it's also a great way to invite men in a non-threatening way.
to experience the ministry of the water boys. And then lastly, look for your replacement. Multiply yourself. Be a disciple maker. Okay, look for others who are being called just as you were called. That's the expectations when you become a table leader. So we talked about criteria. How do you know you're being called to this ministry role? What are some of the expectations when you become a table leader? And the last area is commitments. First commitment. You agree to follow the key elements of the table hour. I can't tell you how important this is. But these elements are God-ordained. They've been there since the beginning of the ministry, and they all work to transform men's lives. If you leave out the God question, if you leave out the announcements, you're depriving your men an opportunity for growth. Amen. Number two, submit a weekly table report. We've made this so easy for you. We send you an email, it has a link, you click on the link and you fill out a few pieces of information. But why do we do this? The reason we do it is because we want to be connect, stay connected to you. You're the heart of the ministry. We need to understand the health of the tables. And this is one way it gives us a snapshot to do that. It's difficult for a leadership to get around to all the tables. So this is a means of communication. It also is, in a sense, a means of accountability. And you should des desire that accountability. You're reporting how things are going at your table. Third commitment. Commit to attending a 10-man leadership gathering. We need you. <clears throat> we need your feedback. Okay? At the same time, you need us. It's an opportunity for us to share with you vision, equipping you, providing encouragement, and encouragement to one another. We meet four to six times a year. Again, it's on the calendar. Pencil it in your personal calendar and make an effort to, to attend these. Fourth commitment. This may be new to some of you. Attend another 10-man table. Monthly, quarterly, why? Well, you need to be fed too. It gives you an opportunity to get some fresh ideas. And it also provides an encouragement to other table leaders and gives you an opportunity to provide them with some feedback. Fifth commitment. Okay, this is important, and we don't want this to be overlooked. Reach out for help and support and guidance when things at your table are bigger than you or beyond your control. Okay, this is rare, but it can happen. Okay, you're not there to fix things, per se. If there is a problem or a situation at your table, you need to seek help. It may be the leadership within, uh, within uh, Water Boys. It may be your pastor. Whoever that is, you need to have discernment on when to go outside your table to discuss a situation and seek help and guidance. Tables operate in confidentiality, and that's a critical element of what we do. But there are ways of sharing, explaining a situation, um, you know, without divulging information where you may not feel uh, privileged or, uh, you know, able, able to do so. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, the last commitment you're making is know the clear expectations going into this, okay? You're accepting, in a sense, a pastoral role. God has placed men in your life, in your circle of influence. <coughs> you're, you're shepherding them. You're discipling them. And understand that. Pray for your men. Make your men feel <coughs> welcomed. And through your relationship with God, 
Remember that you're being used as a vessel to call other men in the closer relationship with him. That's why you're there. That's why we do what we do. So we talked about the criteria. How do you know you're being called to this ministry role? The expectations. What do we expect from you as a leader? And what are the commitments, personal commitments you're making when you step into this role? In conclusion, I'd, I'd like to leave you with a couple thoughts. The first is this. As leaders, we are bent to wanting to present ourselves as having it all together, right? We come to our tables, want to present ourselves most of the time probably as wanting to have it all together. But the reality is we have struggles. We go through trials. We have temptations. We sin. Hey, James 3.2 says we all struggle in many ways. But the important thing is this. We need to commit. We need to commit to the appropriate circles of confession. The appropriate circle of support and accountability. It could be a guy at our table. It could be the entire table. It could be someone at your church. But we need to have someone in our life in this area. When we confess our weaknesses, when we confess our sin, we are taking new ground for the kingdom. We need to remember that. Every week, we receive a leadership update. And there's a phrase in there. Some of us have read it, probably, uh, at least from time to time. Some of us probably ignore it uh, week in and week out. But it says this. Please, Lord, give me ten men, just ten men, who fear nothing but to dishonor your name, who hate nothing but sin, who know nothing at the center of their lives but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And with these ten men, Lord, we will change the world. So, I just want to say, God bless you. Thank you what you do for the kingdom. And thanks, thank you for what you do for this Water Boys ministry. Amen. Amen.